Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this particular short video is going to deal with the calculation of probabilities using the standard normal transformation. So this video is going to deal with the calculation, the calculation okay, of probabilities, of probabilities okay, using the standard, the standard normal, the standard normal transformation transformation okay uh, and we have defined the standard normal transformation to be z of x is equal to x minus mu all over sigma okay uh, and in particular this particular video is going to deal with what we've defined to be type 1 probabilities yeah okay and let's just recap a type 1 probability okay a type 1 probability is going to be a probability of the form of the probability of observing a z score that's less than a particular x value okay let's call that x1 where x1 is positive okay and when we draw the curve for that really what we're interested in the calculation of probabilities Okay, there's, it's with respect to a standard normal variable. The horizontal axis is the z-axis. The curve is bell-shaped, it's centered on zero. And x1 is positive, so x1 is over here. And we're interested in probabilities of observing z-scores less than x1. All the z-scores less than x1 are to the left of it. So these types of probabilities that we're going to be dealing with is the calculation of probabilities that look like this. Yeah? Okay, or areas under the curve that are to the left-hand side of a positive value. Okay? So let's consider an example. Yeah, let's consider randomly selecting, randomly selecting, selecting a single can of Guinness. Okay. okay. And then what we know about cans of Guinness, yeah, okay, well, what we're going to assume, okay, is that the population, okay, the population, okay, Okay. that the mean fill, okay, mu is equal to 500 mils, okay, and the standard deviation is equal to, let's say it's equal to 25 mils, okay, for argument's sake, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to randomly select a single can of Guinness, yeah, from some production line or from the local supermarket, okay, uh, and what we know from Guinness is that they've said that their population uh, average, in other words, the average fill, uh, or the, the, the fill of cans of Guinness, not the average fill, the fills of, can of cans of Guinness should contain 500 mils, and that the standard deviation is 25 mils associated with that particular process. We're randomly selecting a single can of Guinness, and the question that we have is, what is the probability, yeah, okay, okay question, yeah, okay, what is the probability, what is the probability, the probability, Ability, uh, that the can of Guinness, that the can of Guinness selected, yeah, will contain less than, okay, let's say less than 545 mils, okay. So, Every situation, every question is going to be given, you'll, you'll have a scenario, uh, you'll always be given the population mean, and you'll always be given the population standard deviation. And the question itself will ask us something about the random selection of a single can, or the random select selection of a single entity, yeah, okay, from a, that particular population. And in this case, our question is, what is the probability that the can of Guinness selected will contain less than 545 mils? Okay, so the first thing we should do is we should set the experiment up uh, using a curve. Uh, so in this situation, what we're interested in is we're interested in what's the probability okay, that we select a single can of Guinness and that it contains less than 545 mils. Okay, so this particular uh, this particular population has a distribution. Okay, and this particular distribution is centered on 500. Okay. And its mean is 500, that's where it's centred, and its standard deviation is equal to 25, okay? And this variable along here represents the x variable, okay? This is the characteristics associated with all of our cans of Guinness, yeah? And this question is asking, what's the probability of observing an, a can, a, an x variable, yeah, okay, less than 545? 
A 545 is to the right hand side of 500. So 545 is over here. So really what we're asking is, can you tell me the area to the left hand side of 545? Okay. Now, we would be able to do this if we had tables, yeah, okay? Uh, and that them tables gave us the characteristics or the areas uh, associated with our variables for distributions that are centered on 500 with a standard deviation of 25, but we don't. All of our distributions are centered on zero, okay? And they have a standard deviation of one unit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this particular experiment here and we're gonna transform it, okay? So we're gonna transform, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our values along the x-axis and we're going to place them into our transform. So the first x value is z of x is equal to 500. So where does 500 go to? Well x is going to be 500 so it should be 500 minus the population mean which is 500 okay, divided by the standard deviation which is 25. Okay, so divided by 25 which gives us 0 over 25 which gives us 0. So 500 is actually transformed to 0. Now where does 545 go to? So Z, when X is 545, that goes to 545 minus 500 divided by 25. Okay, That's equal to 25 over 25, which gives us a value of, well, let's check that on our calculator. Okay, So 25 divided by 25 gives us a value of 1.4. So 545 is taken to 1.4. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so let's just maybe move this just up a little bit here and let's continue on. Okay. So what we know now is that our transformed variables, yeah, okay, okay, have been taken to zero and have been taken to 1.4. Okay. So let's draw the curve now associated with this transformed variable. Okay. So the curve now looks like this, yeah. Okay. So what we know is okay, is 500 went to 0 and 545 went to 1.4 and this horizontal axis now represents the z-axis brilliant so in this situation here we were interested in what's the probability of uh, selecting a can of Guinness that has less than 545 mils in this scenario here the question becomes what's the probability of observing a z-score less than 1.4 in other words, in this situation here, we have to calculate the area to the left-hand side of 1.4. In other words, this is, what's the probability of observing a z-score that's less than 1.4? Now, what we know is that anytime we have positive z-scores, we should look them up immediately okay, uh, in our z-tables, or from our z-tables. Uh, so what we, should, what we should do is we should go to our z-tables and we need to look up 1.4, okay? Actually, what we're interested in is going to be 1.40, so we're going to come down to 1.40, and the second decimal place in this situation here, the second decimal digit is zero, so we're going to go to 0, 0.00, and we're going to triangulate. So when we get our tables, okay, and when we look up 1.40, we get a value of 0 0.9192. So this is 0 0.9192. Okay, so what does this value mean? Well, this value means that when we look up a positive value on our on our on our tables, yeah, for the z score, it always gives us the area to the left hand side of that positive value. In this case, it's 0 0.9192. Okay. In other words, the probability of observing a z score less than 1.4 is equal to 0 0.9192. But we know that this particular experiment here that's centered on, that's, uh, that's associated with the standard normal distribution, is equivalent to the Z transform to the experiment yeah, that has a different population mean, that has a population mean of 500. In other words, it's equivalent to the probability of, of selecting a can of Guinness that's less than 535. In other words, the probability yeah, of selecting a can of Guinness. Uh, and that kind of Guinness having a fill of less than 525 is the same as the probability of observing a z-score that less than mo that's less than 1.4, which actually is equal to 0 0.9192, or as a as a percentage, that's equal to 91.92%. Okay, so basically what that means is that if this particular process 
if this particular process, yeah, okay, uh, which is the process of filling cans of Guinness, if the population uh, mean for cans of Guinness being filled is 500 mils, and if it has a standard deviation of 25, yeah, well then the probability of observing or selecting a can of Guinness that has less than 545 mils would be equal to 0.9192. Okay. Uh, so thank you for your time uh, and I hope that explained how to uh, perform a standard normal transformation for type 1 probabilities. Okay. Thank you for your time. I'm Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.